good morning. So, my name is Jules Boucher. Welcome to Outperform. And today we're going to talk while I'm driving on the road again, which seems to be the best time for myself, is why aren't you losing weight? So, just to, to be clear, there's a wide variety of reasons why you could not be losing weight. But we're gonna go over some of the just the most basic, simplistic terms that most people don't account for, okay? <clears throat> so, number one would be lack of self-control, all right? So, what do I mean by lack of self-control? Well, I'm not talking about the obvious, okay? The obvious of someone who just simply just eats what they want and just goes crazy all the time. You know, they're like, oh, well, I'm out of shape and fat. You know, well, we all know about that person. I'm talking about the people who make the, the health, I mean, the, um, the conscious effort to better themselves, but still can't seem to get over that hump, you know? <sighs> so when you really break these people down and talk to them, you start finding more of the lack of self-control con self being more of the issue. So there's two ways to look at it. One, you've got the healthy individual that consistently eats healthy, never takes diet breaks, uh, or that would be like cheating for some people, wherever you want to call it. And they're okay with that. They're, they're perfectly fine. You know, they really don't have a mental issue towards food, but they have this idea though that they're eating healthy, so they can eat more of it. Now, the twofold, the two-way street about eating healthy, like really healthy, is you can still overeat. Uh, you can simply overeat by eating fattier meats. So I'm a big proponent in saturated fat in your diet. I don't believe in low-fat diets. I think moderate fat is like this the, the, the best you should do as far as going low. It's very important for cellular function <clears throat> on every level. But at the same time, if I am consistently eating a very fatty meat, no matter how high quality the source is, those fat grams that you can't see are going to add up. And you can eat, I mean, the most grass-fed animals in the world, <clears throat> pasture-raised, uh, raw dairy, super-duper, pure organic, and just because you're eating those things, they are healthier for you. But as in anything, it can still equate for a lot of calories if you're not really paying attention to your portion controls. Uh, and what I mean by not having accountability or self-control is that you just tell yourself, well, I can eat a little bit more because it's healthy. So that'd be reason number one. Okay, so then we would get into lack of tracking, okay? Uh, which kind of falls into what we just talked about, but they are different though. So lack of tracking could be people who don't believe in organic or don't believe in there's really healthy foods, there's just foods. Whatever. But regardless, you're still going to have to track your, your intake, okay? So fat loss, fat loss is all about energy balance, okay? And... If you're not tracking what you're taking in, then you're eventually just going to just simply eat more than what you burn and you're not gonna lose weight. So, the lack of tracking is an issue. Now, this leads us into the next problem. Uh, inconsistent portion control of tracking. Now, what I mean by that is so I use two different methods. One, I'm, I'm very fond of macro count, uh, counting. I don't give a shit what you use. I don't care if you use 
um, macro stats. I don't care if you have my macros, macro plates. I don't care if you use my fitness pal pro. I really don't care. What I do care about is that you need to track it. And you need to be aware of your tracking methods. Or track it by hand. I, I still do that old school style. All right? You know, like, I don't know. I like books. I like paper on my hands. I can't stand reading a goddamn book on my phone. Even though I got so many of them because they're just cheaper that way. But if I can and I find a used dish conditioned book, I'd rather find a book and buy it and have it in my hand so I can look at it. Okay, so back to tracking. So I don't care what app you use, but what is important is that you do use an app that is an adequate with their database. So here's the problem with a lot of tracking just in general, okay? Is that food labels are given very large leeways just for the simple fact that you know, to, to get a chicken breast and just say that one chicken breast is 33.5 grams of protein is just unrealistic because I mean, it's just different sized chickens, okay? You know, a chicken breast has 33 grams of protein and 10 grams of fat. Okay, well, these are all estimates because everybody knows it's not that the FDA is out to fucking ruin your life or something. It's that all chickens are different. You know, some chickens are born fattier, just like humans. You know, we all have different body compositions. So the meat is going to be in a different composition. <clears throat> so what is important is like when you get to say your tracker, this happens. You had a homemade hamburger. And in your mind, it says homemade hamburger. I'm at home and I made a hamburger myself, all right? Now, you take a half a cup of meat, portion it out, you know, or you know that it's, you know, it's uh, four ounces, whatever your patty is, and you go to your app and you see homemade hamburger. That's it, homemade hamburger, that's the one, all right? But if you scroll down and see like homemade hamburger, six ounces, homemade hamburger, five ounces, homemade hamburger, Bob's, something like that, the calorie ratio is gonna be a lot different. So you also need to equate for like, say the type of hamburger meat you're using, we're using 80, 20. We're using 73, 27. Okay, all of that's gonna change your calorie content. Well, it doesn't sound very like a very big deal. Well, it is a big deal because that's why I'm fucking talking about it. Because as that keeps adding up, it eventually pulls you way off of your total daily calorie input. <clears throat> now, another problem we have is the fact that for various reasons so the video doesn't go forever is that we see that when people track calories that they've been as up to 20 to 30 percent difference as far as being off on the amount of calories they're actually taking in now this is not just using apps this is just overall but it's an interesting fact to know that people are just not very consistent as much as you think they are and the way to be consistent in your tracking is simply by just doing it over and over and over and over and over and over and over, just like anything else in life, and you get better at it. Okay, moving on to the second part of tracking. Hand control method. Okay, so this is something that's taught by the government. Uh, this is something that's taught by Precision Nutrition. And other people are beginning to start to jump on the bandwagon. And this is just an idea of, 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 of being giving you the availability to plate your food through your hands so that way you are not a slave to your tracker okay so the issues with this is one if you need to be tracking food well nowadays people bring their phone so I really don't care what you say that's not an issue having to track food wherever you go all right 
And if you're working towards a goal, there are some sacrifices you have to make. Sitting down at the table at the restaurant and typing in your food while talking to people is not really some type of large sacrifice. And if you're doing it, you're not ruining the night for everybody else. You're simply probably inspiring them anyway to take some fucking self-control in their life and do something about it. Now, we're talking like if you're specifically working on a goal. If you don't want to track it in front of people, it's not a big deal. You don't want to worry about it. You got mental problems about it causing anxiety and things like that. That's, that's a different story. But for the most part, just regular people working towards a goal. You got to make sacrifices. You already have your phone. It's not like someone told you to bring the food scale and start weighing everything out there. So when you're using the hand method, once again, eyeball portions everything again. And I mean, it's just way off. People just go way off. I find way worse um, habits done with the hands than ever done with, like, say, phones. The, the proportions are way off. Now, the, the hand method works really well for just general population. It works really well for mental capabilities of working through these issues of getting your life under control not being a slave to a food scale not being a slave to the scale and all the mental anguish that comes with dieting in our in our nation and I, I completely understand that uh, let's see what else do we got flexible dieting okay so flexible dieting is something that I, I like to implement and it is it's basically you taking a food that you want to eat that you would normally consider not healthy but it's important to you like a brownie or something some shit like that and you want to eat that for the snack and so flexible dieting what that does is it allows you to calculate the macros and calories out of that food so that way you can implement it to your diet and not go over your markers and then still be successful in your diet. Now, this is like for, you know, a dessert, a one meal a week. We're not talking about a consistent thing over and over and over. It can be done, but it's just, to me, it's not good. But anyway, once again, not tracking that flexible dieting appropriately, causing you to overeat again, all right? Uh, now, what leads that also to, though, is since sugar and fat, especially accompanied with, say, with chocolate or something, the dopamine that's released is uh, extremely high, and that's why you get this sense of well-being and happiness. Uh, that's why I put cacao in my chocolate in the mornings. Uh, cacao chocolate in my coffee in the morning, sorry. Uh, because I like that chocolate taste. Uh, but it's very, very high in antioxidants, even if I use just regular cocoa powder. Um, and so I get a sense of well-being because it tastes good, you know. And uh, chocolate mixes well with coffee. It really enhances the taste on either end. But I'm not putting all the sugar in there. I don't need empty calories. That's not going to give me anything. But that can tend to vast overeating. Uh, because what that does is uh, every food's the same. If I keep eating meat, especially me being a fast fat oxidizer. So I do really well on high, 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 high protein. I crave more meat. Like I'll crave red meat. I love red meat. Can't ever stop eating it. I never get tired of it. I am the most ultimate, pure, white, trash American ever made. I can eat hamburgers every day. I don't get tired of them. Ever. I love them. But the more you eat something, the more it calls to you. Okay? So, it being sugar and fat combined, food scientists know this, you know. This is like a, a big time win-win for junk food. So, 
besides all the other hormonal responses that goes on and insulin dropping and you getting hungry again and blah, 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 blah. But it keeps calling to you and this can cause to a mental issues as far as constantly craving these foods. And I do the same thing. You know, if I'm to eat something bad for flexible dieting, because it means that much to me, I gotta have this, blah, blah, blah. That's like a nightmare for me. That is a consistent, constant call to junk. All right? And it'll make me crave sweets. And the only way I can crave that sweet tooth is by now adjusting my macros and raising my carbohydrates. And it's just not worth the time. So flexible dieting is an awesome tool for people who, who have trouble sticking to very strict diets. And when I mean by strict, I just mean not eating foods that don't give you any beneficial health benefits. But at the same time, it could cause you to begin to overeat and constantly keep calling towards it. And what happens is when you keep to, even if you're just snacking it on everyday basis now, then you start to stop tracking it because, well, it's just a little bit. It's just a little bit. All right. So those are my reasons for now in this video on why you're not losing weight okay so we have a lack of self-control lack of tracking multiple ways uh, as far as using our apps the tracking sometimes is off 20 to 30 percent remember food labels are not exact you know and uh, we have flexible dieting issues and things like that but it's all kind of coming back to tracking and accountability no matter which way you look at it be consistent, stay positive, you know, stop making out to be so, so negative, like this diet thing's so horrible, it's, it's a positive thing for your life, and open your mind to other countries, and what I say by that is just eat other ethnics of foods, um, other tastes, other, other types of food from different ethnic backgrounds. You'd be amazed on how you can food prep on a Sunday and cook 15,700 chicken breast and uh, 37 pounds of vegetables and then keep seasoning it differently throughout the week for the next couple of meals and, and feel like you're not just eating the same thing over and over. And no one's saying that you have to eat the same thing over and over. It is way easier to meal prep. It keeps you on track, but at the same time, you know, if you have the ability to cook your food, cook your food, enjoy yourself, all right? You know, food tastes good. You know, food tastes good. But, I mean, if you're trying to lose weight, you, you're just gonna have to be accountable, all right? So, I hope this helps out.